This is a Pinball News production. Uh, thank you for inviting me to this Dutch uh, Spring Ball Open 25th edition. Uh, thank you, Gerard, for giving me the opportunity to talk to the museum we are so proud of. Um, my name is uh, Misha. I am uh, the education guy. Uh, every Wednesday uh, is my education guy thing. Um, uh, in normal life, I'm a uh, photography uh, educator, so I teach people how to make better pictures. Um, and my Wednesday is my education day. Um, it's 2024, it's the 25th uh, DPO. Um, next year is uh, 10 years of pinball, uh, Dutch Pinball Museum. We have some, uh, some pins. Uh, you can uh, get one. Uh, and if you wear this during uh, the next year, during your visit in the Dutch Pinball Museum, you get uh, some extras. We won't tell you what, but it's fun. So get your, um, get your pen here or at the museum booth, uh, and you'll get some extras. Uh, first, I start with a short introduction about the museum. Um, I don't know if everyone uh, uh, has been there, but uh, we are located in Delshaven, in Rotterdam. Uh, it's the big brown building on the left. It's a very nice uh, atmosphere in this, uh, this part of Rotterdam. Some inside pictures uh, where you can see how it's decorated. Uh, this rug really ties room together. And we have some, uh, uh, some animals uh, in the, we have some mouses and we have a dinosaur. Um, most people think that pinball originated in the USA. Um, I'm not sure about that. Um, let me go to the States. Uh, we went there a couple of weeks ago in Chicago and um, I had a story about our museum and I told the American people, uh, I showed them this painting. Uh, most American people know this painting. It's a painting about the pilgrims leaving uh, to, uh, with Speedwell to the Mayflower and they went to the United States to, um, to create the land. But they departed from Del Zaham. And maybe you think that's a little coincidence, but it's not. Um, if you zoom in on the Netherlands, the region of Rotterdam, and you zoom in a little more, Del Zaham is here on the left. And you, when you stand on this bridge and have this view, you see here on the left side the Pilgrim's Father's Church. So those people, they embarked the Speedwell, they went to the Mayflower, and they uh, made a trip to the Promised Land. And they started their journey, their journey here. Um, but there were more people uh, going to the States in, in later times, and a lot of them, they traveled with the Holland America Line. And maybe you've heard of it. It's a, it was a, a big boat uh, traveling from Rotterdam to, the, to New York. Um, and here you see Delshaven, and here you see the right side where the Holland America Line, the ships, departed. And one of them who departed from the Holland America Line to the States was a guy named David Gottlieb. Maybe you've heard of him. Um, he went in 1910, on the 4th of June, with the SS Nordam from Rotterdam to New York. This is the passenger list from that date. And if we zoom in, and we zoom in a little more, you see the third, David Gottlieb, and he went to New York. But after New York, he went to Chicago. So, a certain David Gottlieb traveled in 1910 to Chicago. That must not be a coincidence. Um, and, as you all know, 17 years later, the Gottlieb and Go was established. Is it the same David Gottlieb? Well, I know. 
Um, and I also know that in 1947, Harry Mavs made the first pinball with flippers, and he made it for the company Gottlieb and Co. So that is not a coincidence. We have the Pilgrim Fathers Church, we have Hotel New York, where the uh, Holland American Line departed, and we have the Dutch Pinball Museum. And we all have that in two square kilometers. Um, so, I dare to say, pinball originated in Rotterdam, and therefore pinball, or Rotterdam is the pinball capital of the world. <laughs> If there are any uh, people from Chicago who want to uh, discuss this theme, <coughs> we're glad to discuss it with them. Um, but let me get into the, the base of my talk. Um, this is a, a bird. It's a seabird. And this is the Latin name. Uh, I won't try to pronounce it. But in Dutch, we call this a stem. Right. Can you show the Latin name again? Yes, of course. Fallacius Zanfikensis. Yes, <laughs> it's your try is better than mine. Uh, but we call this a stern, a stern, and this is a flock of sterns. And for argument's sake, let's call this a collection of sterns. Uh, a collection of sterns is not a museum, because this is a museum. This is the Natuurhistorisch Museum in Rotterdam. And I have another example from a museum with birds, um, like this, the Bristol City Museum. And you probably see the difference between a collection and a museum. Because a museum is uh, significantly different from a collection, a museum is an institution an institution dedicated to displaying and preserving culturally and scientifically significant objects. And pinball is a culturally and scientifically significant object. At least this man agrees with us. It belongs in a museum in the other Jones. Well, as I said in the beginning, the Dutch Pinball Museum originated in 2015. It started as a flock of games, and uh, uh, the founder is Gerard, and he is still the CEO. <laughs> uh, Gerard wanted more. Um, he said pinball is more than fun and games, because pinball is culturally significant. It has a roaring history, uh, with a lot of told and untold stories, and we all know pinball is technically challenging. Um, so a museum must preserve as part of its history, um, and we do that for the past, the present, and the future generations. Um, we showcase and we tell stories about pinball. Pinball stories we collect everywhere. Uh, the DPO is a perfect example of a place where to collect stories. So we display these stories about the technology. We have a magnificent plexiglass um, <coughs> pinball machine. We tell uh, about the history of the pinball. We tell about the art, about the seduction. We tell about the game, about the makers. Um, some of these, those makers you can find here so in the DPO. We tell about the players, um, and we tell about the love for the silver ball. Um, some people uh, rather call this fighting the silver ball, but I prefer the love of the silver ball. Um, but we also want to experience, we want to go back in time, we want to play, um, and therefore we came up with another name for a museum, and we call it a museum. A museum is a museum where you can experience, where can you where can use the games, so you can experience some sterns, or a flock of sterns, or uh, some a flock of Gottliebs or a flock of Bally Williamses. Um, but how to come from a collection to a museum? What are the struggles uh, we have to encounter uh, in being a museum? Um, we have defined what a museum is, yeah, and that we want to tell the stories about <coughs> pinball. Um, the question is, how do we tell the stories about pinball without scaring the public? 
and maybe you think scaring the public, why would you scare the public? Now, before we uh, come to that, we first have to define our target, target audience. Um, what is our target audience? Anyone has any guesses what the target audience for <coughs> our pinball museum is? Pinball wizards? Pinball wizards, okay. Everyone. Everyone. Everyone, that, that's difficult because when you are a hairdresser in Rotterdam, is are people with hair living in Chicago, are they your target audience? Hmm, don't think so. But we try to get everyone, but I think that's a difficult task. Anyone else? International tourists. International tourists, yes. <clears throat> well, we have defined three categories, and I come up with a fourth category later on. <clears throat> the pinheads, like you said. Pinheads? Uh, the people visiting Rotterdam and want to do something, tourists. Uh, but there's a, a big audience, we call them the nostalgia. And those are the people, they played a pinball machine uh, when they were young. So what do they, those people expect? Well, pinheads, they expect a lot of machines to play. The nostalgia people, they want to play the they, they want to play the pinball machine they used to play on. So they come in and they ask for, do you have the Adams family? Or do you have the pinball machine with the robot girl on the back house? Or do you have the pinball machine with the big head, the head where you can shoot on? And these type of questions we get a lot in the museum. And the tourists, well, they just want to have a good time. Uh, and they saw the museum was the number one on TripAdvisor. Um, so when you go to Rotterdam um, as a tourist and you want to do something, and you go on TripAdvisor, we are the number one things to do in Rotterdam. Several years. For several years. And I think when you, when you check in, uh, the number one thing to do in the Netherlands, I think we also do. Um, the, the fourth category, I think there's a fourth category besides the pinheads, the nostalgia, and the tourists. And those are the pin, pinball pilgrims. Um, they want to see something special. Uh, they want to experience things that you cannot experience anywhere else. Um, I am uh, a pinball pin, pilgrim, but I'm, I'm also an art pilgrim. So I went to um, um, to Milan to see this paint, uh, this painting from Botticelli. Um, and when people come in our museum, they in general want to play pinball. And we have another task because we also want to educate them. And that's the struggle. Because most pinball manufacturers, they are excellent marketeers, most. Not everyone knows. Um, and we all know how hard it is to walk past by a pinball machine and not play it. So you could say um, education is boring, pinball is fun. Um, education, when told by an old white man like me myself, is boring and pinball is fun. So that's our struggle. Um, so, can't you add a bit of comedy in the education? Yes, I try to. Uh, we, we do. Promise. Um, so, we have to give our visitors what they want. They can play with pinball. If they uh, pay the entrance fee of 16 euros, they can play for two hours, they can uh, buy a, a day pass, they can stay for all day. And along the way, we educate them. And we try to do that in a not boring way. We want to tickle them, we want to seduce them. I have some examples. Uh, people um, are, you could say they are on the first date with pinball, most people, when they enter our museum. And the pinheads, they, they, know, they know about the pinball machines, built pin built pilgrims, they all know everything. Uh, but most people come in and they have a first date with, um, with our museum. So we want to tickle them, not make them afraid of uh, our hobby. 
So we, some examples, when you enter our museum, um, you come in and you see the Tupi Homo Dead. It's on display here, so in the mini museum. Um, uh, every hour, uh, Gerard makes a demonstration. Uh, we have a, a very nice plexiglass um, uh, pinball machine. It's the Stardust from 1971. And this is uh, uh, the history room you enter when you, uh, when you enter the, machine, the museum. We have some real nice artifacts, uh, like this miniature um, pinball mock-up made by Dennis Nordman. Um, this mini uh, mock-up uh, gave him a job in the industry. Uh, we explain what pinball is, pin and balls, and how pinball machines were made. And we have a big wall with pre-war pinball machines, uh, and we call this the wall. If you go up the stairs, there are uh, 120 machines that you can play, they are on free, free play. And we have some education uh, uh, displays. We have three categories, factory figures, machines, and people. These are some examples, factory figures about the doll, uh, pinball people about Steve Ritchie, designer, and what we try to do is we try to tell little stories that you can read in under 30 seconds. So uh, when you play, uh, uh, you do a, a two-player game, and uh, if the other player is, uh, is playing, you can read a short story about the ball, or a story about the Adams Family pinball machine, or about Roger Sharp, uh, one of our pinball heroes, or about Gary Stern, another pinball hero, uh, or about abbreviations in pinball, or as I say, how to scare new people away from the home. <laughs> um, we do things thematic, so we have a very nice uh, music room, and we have the music pins, uh, and in the background we have a big black and white uh, uh, display with musicians playing pinball like Michael Jackson, um, uh, help me, uh, Tina Turner, um, a lot of people, and they, they all came in the museum, didn't they hear it? They all came in the museum. Even Michael Jackson, last week he was there. <laughs> people think he's dead, you know, he lives in Rotterdam and he comes to the museum. Um, this is another thing we have, really a really nice artifact. Uh, the Madonna pinball, the never made Madonna pinball. Um, this was the um, pitch from Python Angelo uh, to make the Madonna pinball. It was never created, the management didn't want it. Um, but this drawing is, is great, and uh, we have the invoice he sent to Bali Williams. Um, this is another example. We, uh, most people know the Funhouse, the 1990 pinball machine. A few people know the predecessor, the Funhouse from 1956, uh, on the right side, and on the left side we have the 1994 Roadshow. And next to it we have a display cabinet, and the display cabinet gives more information about the three machines, uh, including a, a story about the Funhouse Riverview amusement park. So there was an amusement park um, in Chicago, a few blocks away from the factories, and this was a real inspiration uh, for a lot of designers. Uh, the Funhouse uh, pinball is uh, made after the um, Funhouse ride in, in the Riverview amusement park. We have some tickets. Uh, we also have a, a big life-size translight of the Twilight Zone uh, in a corner of our museum. Where we uh, made an exact copy of the, the Twilight Zone. And if you want to go to the restrooms, uh, we don't give you any rest. Because in the restrooms, we have what we call toilet stories. Uh, these are also short stories uh, when you sit down, uh, peeing or making a number two. Uh, you can uh, read those stories, and every toilet has, another, has a different story. So we have a story about um, the SBA dollar, about women's rights uh, and uh, pinball machines. Uh, we have a story about 
um, how the six flippers came into the Humpty Dumpty machine. Uh, these are all great stories to read uh, when you are in the restaurant. Uh, another advantage is that uh, men sit down during their toilet visit. Um, of course, we have some, uh, some old machines, uh, wedge heads, also with a little explanation next to it. And we have the um, Humpty Dumpty uh, also here on display uh, with three other of the fairy tale uh, series. There are uh, seven machines belonging to this series and we have uh, four of them. We have the Humpty Dumpty, the Lady Robin, uh, uh, Lady Robin Hood, Cinderella and the Alice in Wonderland. And we are still missing Jack and Jill, Old King Cole and Alibaba. So um, there is a quest for uh, the missing three. Uh, also in our little mini museum today, uh, and, and normal in the, in the big museum in Delshaven, Rotterdam, are those um, uh, plexiglass boxes uh, explaining the technique of the um, pinball. We have some technical drawings, also with little explanations. And all these stories are incorporated within the museum. So you can play a machine, and you can, and next to it, there is some explanation. And of course we want to, to, to do more, we want to have more, we are expanding every year. Um, and, and Gerard has a, a, a pinball machine wish list, uh, the Red Race prototype, and the three missing machines from the Fairytale series, and the uh, Total Recall prototype, the, the dual Total Recall. Uh, we don't think uh, we can get them, but yeah, you have to dream. Yes, uh, you especially will be able to get any of John Trudeau's 11 whiteboard prototypes, like the light combination rotation. That would be nice, yeah. Um, I have also a wish list for the education part. Um, I want to tell more stories about uh, how pinball manufacturers are seducing customers to buy and play pinball machines. So the market is view. Um, I want to tell stories about pinball art throughout the decades. Um, the difference between fine art, decorative art, and applied art. Uh, so the talk after this uh, from Jean-Paul is, is about the art of the uh, Jersey Jack machines. I think it's a very interesting talk. Uh, of course we want to cooperate with, with other pinball museums and manufacturers. Uh, and we have a, a common goal. The common goal is to bring pinball to a broader public. And things like Expos really help uh, in that uh, in that way. So sure, you can have a great time playing pinball, um, but we all think that pinball is more than fun and games. Um, maybe there are some questions from the audience. Question. Niet allemaal tegelijk. Did you deliberately uh, move to uh, this building because of its location? Um, let, let's say it's, it's all a coincidence, but uh, we think all the stars aligned uh, in the right place, yes. Yes. getting more digital pinball machines in the museum, even just a handful? Um, there, there, is, there is a small chance we, we will have one of them, uh, but, but it won't be in half. Oh, it won't be enough. Wait, so you're going to have more suits? No, we, we, have, we have one and it's now in repair and it will come back in the museum. Ah, I see. Other questions? Yeah, I've been there once, uh, and with 120 machines, I think uh, you must have a great production line with spare parts. So how do you arrange this? So I imagine that something will break down every once in a while for each machine. Yes, did, did, did you break one down? No, no, no. Oh, because then we have to have to sell that with you. Um, um, we, we have, we have a, a team of people who, are, uh, who do the, the maintenance once a week. So 
every Wednesday evening uh, after the, the opening hours. Our opening hours are f uh, Wednesday, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, uh, some volunteers come together and we clean and we repair the, the machines. What kind of people, what kind of people uh, do the uh, repairs? Uh, are you looking for specific uh, profile people? Because I imagine that they are very difficult to find uh, out in the wild. Um, we, 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 have, we have some really good people um, and we could always use some more. So if you want to apply, uh, Gerrit is over there. And uh, if, if you fit in the team, you are, I think you are more than welcome. No questions anymore? You can uh, uh, grab a pin um, when you come next year to the museum. You get some extra things. Um, we hope to see you over there uh, because we think the Dutch Pinball Museum is definitely worth a pilgrimage. Thank you very much. Thank you, Richard.